Okay, so moving forward, you may notice things change slightly from video to video. Uh, and that's just because I'm sort of testing things off screen uh, to make sure that I can give you guys a good straightforward explanation of everything before I actually record the video. So if you notice like the placement of my rocks being slightly different or something like that, that's just because I'm kind of tweaking them as I go um, off screen. So the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit more about lighting. Um, first of all, it, this is kind of the state things were in. Uh, we left, I had these, um, these window lights a little bit brighter. So they were casting a little bit more light uh, on the ground. And I just, I really didn't like the amount of light that they were uh, putting on the ground. I actually wanted more light so I could sort of get these little light pools going on here at the, you know, around the, the bottom of the ground. Um, so I actually backed down the intensity of my window lights a little bit. And then I created sort of this group of um, just sort of, uh, I call them light pools. Um, and, you know, of course, these aren't at all realistic, but artistically, they're giving me the look that I want. So I don't mind um, I don't mind sort of straying for, uh, straying off of like the realm of physical reality and how things would look like in physical reality. I mean, we're doing something very stylized anyway. So, um, at the end of the day, I just, I want, there's a look that I want and you, it's okay to do these little cheats, uh, in order to sort of achieve the look that you want. Now, these lights are nothing special. Uh, just to show you, I do have them with a little bit of a warmish color. Um, I have them where their um, normalize is turned off, cast shadows is turned on, and I have the camera AA down to zero because we don't want to see them in the camera at all. And, and that's basically it. And then I just have them kind of pointing over where I want. <clears throat> where I want the little light pools to be. So um, after I did that, then we do a render and we get something that looks a little bit more like this. So a little bit um, more visually stimulating, I think. Um, and it kind of looks a bit more like you have these pools of light uh, on the ground. Um, and then some light being sort of cast back on the, the house itself. So this just looks quite a bit nicer to me than uh, what we had before. So, um, yeah, basically, you know, if you need to do these little cheats like this to get the look that you want as far as your lighting goes, um, go for it. You know, as long as you can kind of make it work and make it look how you want it to look visually then it's fine to do for it not to be like physically accurate, you know, lighting. Um, so I just want to take a moment to talk about that. And then I also want to talk a bit about glow. Um, now glow is something that I love and I kind of incorporate in a lot of my stuff. Um, I like having a little bit of glowish glowiness and, um, in my scenes um, and all my lights and things like that. It's a really cool effect. Um, however, it's not something that happens when we think of glow. Uh, we generally think of it as just light, right? It's just um, light being emitted and it has this glow about it. But in 3D space, we're kind of missing something that we need to have a glow. So basically we need these little particles in the air. Um, if you're in a vacuum, if you're in a completely clean room with no uh, floating dust or anything like that, you won't get a glow. Um, and in most cases, when you see a glow, it's it's a very thick um, atmosphere. So like when you see things glowing at night, it's because there's a lot of humidity in the air. So there's a lot of little particles in the air for, uh, for the light to bounce off of. And that's basically what glow is is uh, light just bouncing off of these, all these little particles in the air. Now there's a couple different ways to achieve this. Uh, one of the easiest ways and probably less 
um, confusing and strenuous ways to achieve a glow is just to do it in post. So do this in Photoshop or After Effects after you've done the render. Um, and I'll definitely show you guys uh, some tricks on how to do that in Photoshop uh, or After Effects or Premiere or anything really. Um, it's kind of the same concept in all of those different apps, but that's generally the way most people go about doing or adding a glow is using some post effect, like uh, adding it into Photoshop uh, with Photoshop afterwards or adding it in with After Effects afterwards. Now there is a way to achieve this in 3D um, at the cost of higher rendering times, right? We're getting to a point where it's taking a few minutes to render our scene. So everything, every little thing that you add will add render time. Now this is something we can kind of get in place and turn on and off as we need it. But it's a really cool effect and I wanna show you how to achieve a bit of glow in your scene um, at render time. So that's going to be sort of physically calculated and accurately calculated in your scene rather than uh, something you would do in Photoshop. Which that's not to say you can't achieve a really good solid look um, by adding in something like glow or fire or smoke. All these things most people will add in in post and Photoshop or After Effects. but. Um, and they can do a great job. You can also achieve those things in 3D, but at the cost of adding to your rendering times and sort of the clunkiness and, and how well your scene runs overall. So to do this um, in Maya and in Arnold, what we're gonna do first is go to our render settings. And we're going to go to the uh, Arnold renderer and we're going to come down to environment and atmosphere. And I'm going to click um, the atmosphere, this little checker box here. And I want to just uh, add, um, I already have one in my scene because again, I was kind of testing things out, but I'm just going to create a new one here so you can see how things are from the default settings. So I'm going to create a AI atmosphere volume. Okay. And then we get this little, um, this little pop up here. Um, and you, the way that you can get access to this again is just keeping your render settings open and say you click off of it. So it goes to a different, um, different attribute or different node. Um, if you come over here and just click this little guy right there, that will take you back to that. Uh, AI atmosphere volume setting there. Now, but by default, when we do a render, we're not going to get uh, much of anything. So let's just do that really quick to, to show you. And we're rendering with CPU here. So I'm actually going to switch this to GPU. Let's come back over here to system and just switch this to GPU just because it's a bit faster rendering wise. All right, now, so once that starts rendering, you'll see that we don't really see much of a change here. Um, now we will see a change as soon as we come over to our AI atmosphere and increase our density. Um, and this will be a, a very drastic change. So if I just come over to my AI density and bump this up a tiny bit, my entire scene is gonna turn white 
or very close to white, right? We can see a little bit of things in here, but for the most part, my scene is very, is very white. So let's use a very low value for this density. Let's take it to 0 0.001. And even though we can see a bit of what's going on in our scene here, it's still very white, very foggy. So we don't want it to be nearly this foggy. And the problem that we're having is that basically all of our lights in the scene are equally contributing to the amount of um, scatter we're getting. Now, some of our lights, we don't necessarily want them to scatter light. Um, we basically just want our uh, windows to scatter light um, or to get that glow effect. And we maybe some of our skylights to get a little bit of the glow effect. So what I want to do here is go to each one of my lights. And I'm going to start with my light pools here. These are the little cheating lights that I put in to get um, get a good amount of uh, sort of light on the ground. So I'm going to start with these uh, light pools that I have here and just click on those settings. And I want to come down to my volume visibility. And I'm just going to bring that all the way down to zero for each one of those lights. And you're not going to see a huge difference here, but it will make a difference, I promise. So we have all of those bumped down quite a bit. Now I want to bump down my skylights. Uh, mainly I want this one right here to be to have no visibility because otherwise uh, let me just show you what happens. So if I take my my area light here, this one, and bump that down, bump this one down, this one is basically just creating this big sort of hot spot or big white light right here. So I just want to get rid of that one completely. And now we're seeing a little bit of glow only coming from our windows because those are the only lights visible through our atmospheric effect. Now, I do think it looks nice with a little bit of uh, contribution from like uh, that area light. So I'm getting a little bit of warmth there. And then if I contribute with this area light, then I'm getting a little bit of, of coolness there. So that's already turning into this very sort of dynamic uh, looking lighting. And we can get we get that nice glow effect. Now let's go back and look at our atmospheric settings and just how we can tweak these settings a little bit. So um, basically you have your density, which again, the higher we crank this up, the more dense our fog is going to be. So um, I like to use very low levels for this. So maybe like 0.002, something like that. Um, and then we have density color, which will just change the basically the fog color, which also does the added part of like also decreasing our intensity a little bit. You have attenuation, which is basically your fall off. So if you sort of manipulate the attenuation, you get a little bit of a darker scene just because the light dies off quicker. The fog is basically making the light die um, so the light can't travel as far. So you can get some pretty neat effects just by messing with the attenuation. <clears throat> and then the attenuation color as well. I think that I'm, I'm generally happy keeping the attenuation color all the way to white and just sort of uh, manipulating the attenuation, the density, and the... Um, the density color. <clears throat> you know, basically until you get sort of the result that you want to get. And that is how we can achieve a little bit of a glow effect to our lights. And we can see that this doesn't add uh, much render time to our scene. You know, we're still rendering this pretty quickly with my GPU. Um, 
but adding more and more lights to the scene over time will heavily increase um, increase the uh, the render times for this particular scene. So, um, and I do have my camera AAs up a little bit higher than they normally are, so that's why it's taking a little bit longer as well. Um, so from here, we can just do a little test render. So here we are with um, with no light pools, only the light from our our sky and our windows. And they, here we have our lighting with our sort of cheating light pools. And then we can look at the difference here between those three. So it, you know, it adds that nice glowy effect to your windows, but it also gives it a bit of a, a really nice atmospheric effect to your entire scene. Um, and this will really start looking cool when we get some trees and other plants added in our scene um, where we can kind of see the light rays coming through from these above lights.